In this video, we will try and understand what is happening in Afghanistan. Why did the US and NATO forces leave Afghanistan? Who are Taliban? How did they emerge? We will also try and understand what is China's, Pakistan's and India's strategy with respect to Afghanistan and many more such type of questions that you may have with respect to Afghanistan. Although I may not be able to cover all the questions that you may have, but I will try. Alright then, without any further ado, let's begin. The first thing that you know is that the United States and NATO forces have decided to leave Afghanistan. United States President Joe Biden has set a deadline of 11 September 2021. Why 11 September? Because it will mark the 20-year anniversary of 9-11 attacks on the US. That means by 11 September 2021, all American and NATO troops will end their operations in Afghanistan. Now the question is, why are they leaving Afghanistan all of a sudden? Do you think it is because 20 years have passed, so as a mark of respect, they have decided to leave Afghanistan? Do you really believe this is the reason? Or do you believe that they have accomplished their objectives and made Afghanistan free from terrorism? Even that is not the case. Taliban is still there, Al-Qaeda is still there. Although Al-Qaeda is not very active in Afghanistan, but their roots and networks are still there in Afghanistan. And not to forget, there are many Pakistani-based affiliate terror groups that are also operating in Afghanistan. So overall, the point is, America has not accomplished its objective of fighting terrorism. Of course, they have killed Osama bin Laden, but they killed him in 2011. If that was the goal, they should have left one or two years after that. And if at all their goal was to finish terrorism from root, then why are they leaving without completing their task? Taliban is still there. Al-Qaeda is still there. Isn't that weird? Only three things can happen. Case one, either they have finished their objective, that is finished Taliban and Al-Qaeda from root, which we know they have not. And then case two, America has lost their battle against terrorism. Even that is not the case, they have enough technology and weapons. They could have easily continued for more years. Or case three, maybe ending terrorism from root was never their goal in the first place. I want to bring your attention to this third statement. Ending terrorism in Afghanistan was never the ultimate goal of the United States. You must have heard in the news that US forces have left Bagram Air Base at night and that too without informing the Afghan commander. To be honest, you don't expect this kind of behavior from the American forces. This is unprofessional. The Americans have invested so much. Bagram is United States military's biggest airfield in Afghanistan. Bagram Air Base was the epicenter of America's war against the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda after 9-11 attacks. There has to be a proper handover ceremony, right? Shutting off the electricity and slipping away in the night without notifying the local forces commander? It is funny and at the same time it is unprofessional as well as ironic. After nearly 20 years of living here, you cannot leave abruptly without informing that too at night and early morning. In fact, there were reports that said, after the US forces slipped away in the night, that military base was looted and ransacked. In fact, there are reports that says, thousands of vehicles, weapons and other military items of the US military from Afghanistan has fallen in the hands of Taliban. If you see, United States is indirectly arming the Taliban. If Taliban is America's enemy from last 20 years, this kind of act is clearly telling a different story. You cannot leave a property without a proper handover. So all of this tells us that there is something fishy about all of this. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the US military. The way they show it in movies and glorify them, it is an illusion. It is purely a marketing tactic. They rely on narrative building. After all, they have to live up to their self-made global image of being a savior. That is why they rely heavily on narrative building. America has been doing information warfare since the World War II. US has control of global media as well as the internet. They have media outlets around the globe in almost every country to cover stories, write articles, books, opinions, movies, drama, etc. That is how they get the power to create stories, hide the truth, exaggerate the truth or dilute the truth as per their needs. That is how narratives are built. Intellectuals and educated people are hired by these big media outlets. With the help of the right words, you can twist the nuances of any story. That will have a drastic effect on human emotions and feelings. And like that, Americans get to become the sole custodian of democracy in the world. And they even use these same tools to destabilize any foreign country. Anyhow, so there's something fishy when it comes to United States leaving Afghanistan abruptly. To understand this issue, you have to first understand why America came to Afghanistan in the first place. 1990 marked the beginning of America's endless wars in the Middle East. Before that point, American combat operations in the Middle East had been generally temporary and short term. And we also know that Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. After World War II from 1947, the Cold War had started. 
It was a period of ideological and geopolitical tension between the United States and the Soviet Union. In other words, the entire world became bipolar world. You could only support the USSR or the United States. These two were the only major powers. Cold War ended with the fall of Soviet Union in 1991. During the Cold War, the United States was based upon capitalism and democracy, while the Soviet Union was based upon communism and dictatorship. That is why the end of Cold War is often viewed as the victory of United States democracy over Soviet Union's communism and dictatorship. Now, let's see when did Taliban emerge? They emerged in 1994. And when did the United States attack Afghanistan? They attacked after the September 11, 2001 attacks. That is when the United States under President Bush officially announced the war on terror. And we also know who was the mastermind of 9/11 attacks. It was Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was the founder of Al Qaeda. So you see Taliban was not the enemy of America. It was Al Qaeda. The mainstream media and the Bush administration blended the Taliban and Al Qaeda together, making the two groups the same terrorist entity in the eyes of the American public. But the truth is Taliban had no role in the 9/11 attacks. Now let's focus on Al Qaeda for a few minutes. Al Qaeda was founded in late 80s as a byproduct of the Soviet Afghan war. The Soviet Afghan war began in 1978 between Afghanistan and Soviet Union. It ended in 1989. Since the beginning of Cold War in 1947, Afghanistan had been under the influence of the Soviet government. I'm not saying Afghanistan was part of the Soviet Union. I am saying it was under the influence of the USSR. It received large amount of economic assistance, military equipment training and military hardware from the Soviet Union. USSR invaded Afghanistan in 1979. This was Soviet Union's last foreign military invasion after its decline in 1991. From here on I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. The reason Soviet Union got involved in Afghanistan's internal affair because there was a lot of internal political instability in Afghanistan in 1978. Soviet Union had a friendly relationship with some of its leaders in Afghanistan till 1978 and wanted to strengthen their hands. At the invitation of the then president Nur Muhammad Taraki, USSR entered Afghanistan in advisory role. Nur Muhammad Taraki was an Afghan communist statesman during the Cold War. He was assassinated in 1979. The Afghan internal politics turned worse and that is when Soviet forces changed their role to active combat. Anti-communist Islamic Afghans began to dislike Soviet intervention, but they did not have the required weapons, training or any kind of support from other countries. Afghans resisted as much as they can. United States was carefully observing this entire political scenario. They wanted to make a strategic entry. If you have watched the movie Rambo 3, Sylvester Stallone who was John Rambo, he was an ex-American soldier helping the Afghan mujahideen in fighting the Soviet forces. Although the movie was again part of American narrative building, but if you have watched that movie, you will realize that America had supported Afghanistan in fighting against the Soviet forces. Now the question is why did America support Afghanistan? If you remember the 1954 Vietnam War, China had become communist in 1949. Communists were in control of North Vietnam. United States was afraid that communism would spread to South Vietnam and then the rest of Asia. That is when the US decided to send money, supplies and military intervention in South Vietnam. Till date it remains a controversial question whether or not US lost the Vietnam War. If you really want to know the answer, the Americans lost the Vietnam War. Although they have a different opinion about this, but in reality American military faced a lot of casualties and they also did not succeed in winning South Vietnam. And by the way, Vietnam was militarily supported by the Soviet Union. The Vietnam War came to an end in 1973. With that, US also officially ended its direct military involvement. In 1971, if you remember, India and Pakistan went to war, which resulted in East Pakistan's defeat and creation of Bangladesh. This war is also called as Bangladesh Liberation War. Naturally, Pakistan was not at all happy with India. So to take revenge against India, Pakistan launched the Khalistani movement, which is part of its K2 mission. K1 is Kashmir and K2 is Khalistan. You can also cross check even militancy and insurgency in Punjab started in 70s and 80s. It gained momentum during Zia ul Haq's presidency in 1977. Zia ul Haq was a Pakistani army general. He did judicial murder of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, father of Benazir Bhutto. He then took control of Pakistan and made himself as the president of Pakistan in 1978. The year 1978 was also the beginning of Soviet-Afghan war. 
although Pakistan was also worried about Soviets taking over Afghanistan. But Pakistan's main concern was to take revenge from India and get Americans involved in the Soviet-Afghan war so that they can get money from the US. Zia ul Haq was a clever man. He came up with a plan. He met the US President Jimmy Carter and offered to help America in taking revenge from the Soviet Union for the Vietnam's loss. That is how Operation Cyclone started. CIA gave funds and weapons to the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan through Pakistan. Pakistan played the role of a middleman because United States did not want to get directly involved with the Soviets. And by the way, Pakistan also used this money and weapons to train militants against India for its K2 mission. You can cross-check militancy and insurgency in Punjab increased in 1980s. Pakistan could only provide ground support, but they needed funds. That is how Pakistan made use of American funds to train militants to fight the Soviets and India in the POK region. They wanted to kill two birds with one stone. If you look at the map, the Americans cannot fly directly into Afghanistan. Pakistan provided the land route. US shipments used to arrive at Pakistan's port. Through land route, arms and weapons used to be supplied to the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan. So much of money and weapons were coming in. Pakistani army and ISI even created many rebel groups in Afghanistan. They recruited so many mujahids from all over the world, especially from the Islamic countries. If you see Pakistan created a religious militancy so that they can ask the United States for more money. This is where militancy terror turned into a business. So basically Pakistan became a broker during the Afghan Soviet war because Pakistan used to control all the money and supplies sent from the United States. Pakistan's ISI used to invite all the leaders of the Mujahideen for meetings in Peshawar, Pakistan. If I have to explain this in a much more simpler manner, Afghanistan was divided politically from inside. One Islamic group used to support communism and the other group was radical Islamic. The group which supported communism was backed by the Soviet forces. On the other hand, the anti-communist Islamic rebels, who were also called the Mujahideen fighters, they were trained and many of them were also created and supported by the Pakistani army with the help of money and military supplies sponsored by the United States. This went on for almost 10 years. The Soviet-Afghan war ended in 1989. Soviet Union pulled back its troops and abandoned the mission in Afghanistan. And we also know that by 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now try to understand this. By 1989, the Soviet forces had pulled out of Afghanistan. That means the Mujahideen fighters had no Soviet forces to fight with. They only had the Afghan communists to fight with. That means they are fighting their own people with different ideology. That also meant Pakistan's terror business was coming to an end. Since the Soviet-Afghan war came to an end, United States would stop funding Pakistan. If you notice, this ending of the Soviet-Afghan war was turning out to be a big loss for Pakistani army. If there is no conflict, how will Pakistan get funding from United States? After all, Pakistan succeeded in turning militancy terror into a business, right? That is when Al-Qaeda emerged in 1988. So it was basically a creation of the Pakistani army. Pakistani Army and ISI trained Al-Qaeda. And I'll tell you why they created it. Pay attention. So Pakistan was a broker in the Soviet-Afghan war. USA did not want to get directly involved, but they wanted to take revenge from the Soviets. That is how Pakistan offered to be a broker. United States agreed and started giving funds and military supplies. That means Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and many Islamic countries became an ally of the United States in fighting against the Soviets. And this went on for 10 years from 1979 to 1989. Finally, in 1989, when the war came to an end, the Americans were reducing aid, money and supplies to Pakistan. For 10 years, Pakistan made a lot of money by simply being a broker in a war. Now, all of a sudden, when everything is coming to an end, that is not a good thing, right? If you think from Pakistan's point of view. What Pakistan did was, it formed a group called the Al-Qaeda, which consisted of Mujahideen fighters who fought in the Soviet-Afghan war making Osama bin Laden as their head. Between 1989 and 1995, Al-Qaeda's focus was to staff its army and grow its network. Pakistani army had brainwashed these Mujahideen fighters into believing that now they have to fight the corrupt Islamic leaders and United States presence in Islamic land. Do you see the twist? Basically, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the US expanded its security presence in the Middle East. That's a different story why they expanded it. I am cutting the long story short so that you can understand better. Pakistani army and ISI brainwashed these Mujahideen fighters into believing that now they have to fight the corrupt Islamic leaders like the Afghan democratic government of Muhammad Najibullah and United States presence in Islamic land. Take a second and try to understand the situation. 
Initially, Pakistan became a broker of the Soviet-Afghan war and invited America by taking a lot of money and military supplies from them. When the war ended, they made their masters, that is the United States, look like an enemy in the eyes of the Mujahideen fighters. And as we know, after the fall of the Soviet in the 90s, the United States expanded its security presence in the Middle Eastern region. Saddam Hussein's regime became America's first target in the 90s. Pakistan saw this as an opportunity and created Al-Qaeda. That is why you will notice throughout the early 90s, Al-Qaeda emerged with a number of other radical Islamic organizations in countries like Egypt and Sudan. In 1996, when the Pakistani army created Taliban, that is when Al-Qaeda re-established its headquarter in Afghanistan, under the shadow of Taliban. By 1997 and 1998, Al-Qaeda's influence started expanding in African countries. If you remember the 1998 US embassy attacks in Kenya and Tanzania, it was done by Al-Qaeda. That means Al-Qaeda is a byproduct of the Soviet-Afghan war, created and trained by Pakistani army and ISI. So all throughout the 90s, Al-Qaeda was expanding and growing. It was trying very hard to draw attention of the United States. And finally, when the 9-11 attack happened, that is when United States declared war on terror and took Al-Qaeda seriously. Within weeks, the US government responded by attacking Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces in Afghanistan. So if you notice, Pakistan succeeded again by bringing the Americans back to Afghanistan after 1989. Last time, America indirectly entered in Afghanistan, but this time they sent troops. As I've showed you before, to reach Afghanistan at that time, United States needed the land and air route of Pakistan. Al-Qaeda, Taliban, all are creations of Pakistani army and ISI. So this is where I'm repeating again, Pakistan succeeded in turning militancy terror into a massive business. If you see the interviews of Parvez Musharraf, he has openly admitted that the Pakistani army and ISI have trained the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. He has also admitted that Haqqani, Osama bin Laden, they were all heroes for them. We have religious militancy in Pakistan to introduce the right to the Soviets. We have brought the Mujahideen to the whole world. We have trained the Taliban to give them weapons. They were our heroes. This is the right to the Haqqani. The hero is our hero. ठीक है टीज़ का हीरो है बिल्कुल है वो सामा बिन लादन हमारा हीरो था सीआईए का भी था शायद यस and I have told you that these Talibani and Al Qaeda fighters they were all Mujahideen fighters of the Afghan Soviet war that means during the 80s Haqqani and Osama bin Laden were also heroes of the United States and the CIA after all they fought against the Soviet on behalf of the Americans funded by the CIA the only difference is that during the 80s the situation was different and after late 90s these same heroes became villains. Pakistan did the same thing in Kashmir. When did militancy started in Kashmir? It started during the end of the Soviet-Afghan war. It was Pakistani army and ISI who created lashkar e taiyaba jaish e mohammad These organizations are nothing but affiliates of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. All their leaders have Soviet-Afghan war experience. Pakistani army and ISI are responsible for creating this religious militancy. They ordered them to do jihad in Kashmir in the name of religion. So if you analyze it properly, you will realize that Pakistan is the creator and founding father of all this. But even the United States are to be blamed for all this mess. After all, they supplied money, military equipment. So if you see, terrorism is a creation of both Pakistan as well as the indirect involvement of the West. No one says and admits it openly, but ultimately this is the truth. Now let's fast forward to 2021. 2021 marks the 20 year anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on the US. American President Joe Biden has announced that all American and NATO troops will be pulled out of Afghanistan by 11 September 2021. Again, the same question comes. Do you believe that the Americans have accomplished their objectives and made Afghanistan free from terrorism? Taliban is still there. Al-Qaeda is still there. This is where you have to realize that Americans did not come to Afghanistan to finish terrorism. Yes, they did kill Osama bin Laden, but they did not finish terrorism. They had some other agenda. And do you even believe that the CIA doesn't know who trained and created Taliban and Al-Qaeda? Americans very well know it's Pakistan. And they were still taking Pakistan's help, giving them aid, technology, arms and ammunition. Bill Clinton, George Bush, Obama, during their presidency, everyone has signed deals and given aid to Pakistan. Only Trump was different. That is why I also believe that Trump was better for America as well as for India. In fact, a lot of Americans even believe that the 9-11 attacks were pre-planned. Anyhow, I'm not going to go deep into that. But the point is, Taliban and Al-Qaeda is the creation of the Pakistan and indirect funding of the West. 
For 20 years, United States and NATO forces fought the Taliban in Afghanistan. For 20 years, Taliban fighters took shelter in caves of northern Afghanistan. The Americans had military base. Taliban used to hide in mountains and caves. Here's a list of NATO installations in Afghanistan. You will find mountainous region coming from northeast side and expanding at the central region of Afghanistan. So these Taliban and Al Qaeda fighters used to hide in the caves of these mountains. That is why the United States used to do continuous air strikes in these mountainous regions. Many Hollywood movies have been made in the last 20 years on US Afghanistan war. It is all part of the narrative building. This is part of the information warfare. With the help of these movies, the US has lived up to its own self global image of being a savior. Now I'm not saying that the Taliban and Al Qaeda are innocent. Yes, they are responsible for many atrocities. But then we also have to blame those who are responsible for the creation of these terror outfits. Now after 20 years, even the Talibanis have become experienced fighters. They have also become smart. They have also learnt diplomacy. They have also realized that if they have to survive in this world, they need to focus on establishing a government. And by the way, one more point that I have to tell you. This idea of withdrawing from Afghanistan, it started during the time of Barack Obama in 2015. In fact, the Obama administration was the first to send a representative to meet with the Taliban leaders and the Afghan government. That meeting was held in Mari, Pakistan. The meeting was not successful. Later, President Donald Trump also appointed a special envoy for Afghanistan to directly negotiate with the Taliban. That means the United States is directly negotiating with Taliban and not bringing the Afghan government. What does it say? One of the two things can happen. Either the US government is scared of Taliban or maybe they have made some deal with the Taliban. And that deal is confidential, that is why they did not even think about involving the Afghan government. And by the way, Taliban does not recognize the Afghan government. Just imagine, if Taliban is the enemy of the US, with whom US has been fighting from past 20 years, and now they are sitting and negotiating with the enemy. If you look at the 2020 US and Taliban peace deal during Trump's presidency, if you read the points of that peace deal, these are the main points. US wanted Taliban to stop violence, reduce hostilities against foreign troops. They wanted Taliban to join intra-Afghan peace talks and cut all ties with foreign terrorist groups, while the US pledged to withdraw all its troops. After the agreement was signed, the US told the Afghan government to release thousands of Taliban prisoners, which was one of the Taliban conditions for starting intra-Afghan talks. By reading the peace deal, don't you think the US is talking to Taliban like an elder brother? You really think the Taliban will follow the American instructions? It does not make sense, right? So there are two possible scenarios as to why the Americans are leaving. One, the Americans did a comedy stunt by making it look like a peace deal so that they can get out of Afghanistan. They are exhausted fighting the Taliban from past 20 years. So the US wanted a face-saving exit. That is why they made this peace deal with Taliban. In reality, the US want to get out of this blunder, which they even regret being part of 20-30 years back. Or maybe the second reason is that genuinely Taliban is going through a change of heart. Maybe they have finally realized that fighting is not a good option and they should turn into peaceful souls. And it took 20 years for America to make the Taliban realize this. And that is why the United States is leaving because Taliban will follow the instructions of the elder brother. These are the only two reasons and I leave it up to you to pick any one reason. If you look at the Afghanistan government, Ashraf Ghani, the American withdrawal has turned the balance of power in favor of Taliban. That means the Afghanistan government will fall shortly. We are also seeing in the news every day that certain percentage of the country is being taken over by the Taliban. That is also the reason why the Indian government is also holding secret talks directly with the Taliban leaders and not with the Afghan government. Now coming to Pakistan. Now that the US is leaving and the Taliban is advancing, Pakistan is again in the spotlight. Pakistan thinks that 20-30 years back they had trained and created Al-Qaeda and Taliban. So somehow if Taliban takes over Afghanistan, then it will serve Pakistan's interest. Taliban is aware of Pakistan's double standard. After the 9-11 attacks, Pakistan played a double game. On one hand, Pakistan gave shelter to Taliban leaders and on the other hand, they were also taking money from the Americans. So Taliban is well aware of Pakistan's double standard. Recently, you must have seen in the news that 11 Pakistani soldiers were killed by tehreek taliban in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Furthermore, you must also realize that Taliban does not recognize the Duran line. In fact, not just the Talibanis, in fact, the entire Afghan population and even the Afghan government does not recognize the Duran line.
If you look at the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province in Pakistan, it consists of Pashtuns. Pashtuns are Afghan people. In Pakistan, after the Punjab province, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province is the most important province. Pashtuns make over 25% of the total population of Pakistan. They are second major ethnic group in Pakistan after Punjabis. The Pakistani armed forces and bureaucracy is filled with Pashtuns. And if you look at the Taliban, they all are Pashtuns. They speak Pashto. Pashtun nationalism is very much deep rooted in them. In fact, the whole border issue between Pakistan and Afghanistan regarding Duran line is based on Pashtun nationalism. Do you really think Taliban will serve Pakistan's interest? Today's Taliban is no longer the same 1994 Taliban. If Taliban takes over Afghanistan, they will also target border areas in Pakistan's Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Baloch nationalism is another issue for Pakistanis. Plus the kind of tortures that the Pakistani army has done on Pashtuns and Baloch people, they have persecuted them for decades. Do you think the Taliban doesn't know this? Taliban will give a massive payback to the Pakistanis. So there is no question of Pakistan-Taliban reunion. Islamic religion card will not work for Pakistani establishment. Taliban very well knows that the Pakistani establishment does not care about religion. It is on record. Parvez Musharraf has sold more than 4,000 Pakistanis to the United States in the form of militancy by putting a tag of Al-Qaeda and Taliban in exchange of money and commission. So there will be a massive payback to the Pakistani establishment. Now coming to China. If you look at the map, China has a very small border line with Afghanistan. If you look at China, it is not interested in making an enemy out of Taliban. But one interesting thing that you have to know is that when you look at the Afghan population, two types of extreme ideology exists. One is the typical Islamic Sharia followers, that is your Taliban. And the other one is a bit liberal Marxist thinkers like the Afghan president Ashraf Ghani. In fact, this is what the entire 1978 Soviet Afghan fight was all about. So basically, on one side you have the Taliban and on the other side you have the Afghan government consisting of modern educated politicians. Both of them are nationalists, but their political ideologies are different. By the way, this could also be one of the reasons why the Americans have decided to leave. Because they have realized that it's difficult to be in the middle of these two political ideologies. And there can never be any reconciliation. So it's better to pack your bags and get out of here. If America has backed out, do you think any other nation would like to send their troops after seeing what happened to America for 20 years? That is why no other country is willing to send their troops, not even India and not even China. Some even think that there would be a civil war wherein the civil society would stand against the Taliban. Of course, the Taliban cannot kill all of its own ethnic people, right? How will they rule or establish their government then? So there could be a political settlement between Taliban and the Afghan government, so that they can jointly shape the future of Afghanistan. That is why the Indian government and the Chinese government both are watching this scenario very carefully and both the governments are also willing to hold talks with the Afghan government as well as the Taliban. And one more point on China is that China doesn't need Pakistan's help. They have direct access to Afghanistan. China can use Pakistan as a broker for initial contact. As it is, Pakistan is neck deep in Chinese debt. India is fine dealing with both Taliban as well as the Afghan government. Of course, any civil government would love to deal with another civil government. However, India is also fine with the Taliban. Back in the 80s and 90s, few Mujahideen commanders had maintained covert ties with the Indian Intelligence Agency, even during the Soviet era, under Nasima Rao's leadership. Nasima Rao government was the first Indian government that had reached out to the Mujahideen government and started building strong relationship with the Mujahideen leaders and other Afghan warlords. India used to provide medical and humanitarian supplies. And that became the basis of growing relationship between the Indian government and the Mujahideen government in Afghanistan. So you have to understand this. For both India and China, Afghanistan is of strategic importance. China is interested in building roadways that would connect Peshawar to Kabul and that would make Kabul part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. India does not want that. Everyone knows that the Afghan government is very friendly with India. Taliban can take side with India when it comes to Afghan nationalism. But then there is also the religious card. Taliban is basically followers of Sunni Islam. And they are 100% advocate of Sharia law. That is what makes the extremists and radicals. And after living in caves for 20 years, they are not going to be that easy to control. For India, it will be difficult to negotiate with them. For China, there is another problem. You must be aware of the Uyghur Muslims in China and how the Chinese government is treating them, right? China also has certain level of threat to its national security if Taliban comes in power. After all, the ultimate goal of Taliban is to establish Sharia. 
religion militancy can also turn out to be heavy for the chinese even india has the same problem even india has concerns what if pakistan again manipulates taliban in shifting their focus in kashmir just like how they did in 80s and 90s so as of now things look very dicey but one thing is very clear that the american withdrawal from afghanistan is a face saving exit ultimately the us did not achieve anything apart from gathering intel and knowledge in fact they did not even exit with proper protocol they made an escape without any proper handover protocol and it is pretty clear that they were exhausted fighting the taliban from past 20 years and they desperately want to get out of this blunder and even the us is aware of this as soon as they leave there will be chaos in this region again and the us is very clever they know that china india pakistan and taliban will fight and conspire against each other but if you are aware of the us nature they cannot sit idle they have to be part of some chaos only then they can maintain their image of being a savior of the world the us will still interfere but in a different way or maybe they are looking for another conflict zone in the world where they can again repeat their narrative so let's see what happens the geopolitics of the indian subcontinent is going to be interesting in the coming months as of now this is everything that you had to know about the ongoing conflict in afghanistan all right then i hope you find this video informative thanks for watching